Welcome to Amplifier's interview series. My name is Christian and joining me today is the co-founder and CEO at Impresit, Roman. Roman, welcome to the series, my friend. How are you today? Thanks, Christian. Thanks for having me. All good. Looking forward to a nice conversation today. Me as well, uh, as today we are talking about go-to-market strategies. So Roman, in your experience, what are some common pitfalls startups face when developing their go-to-market strategies and how can they avoid them? Yeah, well, there are quite a few, to be honest. And just for the sake of a bit of background, so yes, so my name is Roman Zomko. I'm the co-founder of Impressed. It's a product development studio that offers end-to-end -end product development and technical team implementation services. But also, I'm the co-founder of a startup as well called Startup Kit. So, and that's the backend uh, as a service uh, platform that helps launch uh, new technical products faster and cut development costs. So, and in the current market situation, I think it's right the the exact uh, moment to launch this kind of product. So yeah, well, launching a startup is challenging, right? So you need to like, especially in the tech space, you need to think not only about, you know, uh, building the product, but also actually like getting it out to the, to the customers and winning their interest to actually start using it. So I guess from my experience, what I've also uh, encountered as uh, a startup founder as well, I guess one of the main pitfalls is to focus too much on the product and not uh, much enough on the actual, like your uh, strategy of getting your product to, to your clients. Because as great the product may be, like you can invest weeks or months of, of time, significant funds in development. But if you not think early enough of, about who's your uh, client, validate that actually like your uh, target audience need this kind of product. So get, uh, as much feedback as possible, conduct as much client interviews as possible to really uh, get a full uh, proof that yes, there is a significant group who will be interested to use it and will be willing to, to pay for this product. So that's probably one of the main uh, pitfalls that I see many startup founders uh, falling in. So and focusing too much on the product development and not uh, significant uh, efforts on actually uh, validating the idea early as early as possible, preferably before <laughs> investing anything, uh, any money and any time in the product development that there is a market for this product and uh, people are willing to pay, pay for this kind of solution. Uh, then I guess uh, actually uh, not only like, well, at the early stage, it's uh, more validating the idea, but then actually finding uh, relevant uh, sales channels. So I've seen startups that focus on a single uh, channel of uh, getting uh, clients and leads uh, to use their product. I prefer and always advise to have as many as possible and be always willing to uh, ideate to uh make any like kind of like uh just missing the word mm, experiments on what kind of like sales channels to use and and so on and finally uh measuring your uh performance on every possible uh step you can so understanding how much of like efforts you dedicate to acquiring your clients uh, what's the customer acquisition costs and so on and so forth. So I would identify these three key points. I, I want to go to, to the point, uh, you know, especially your last point, uh, about customer acquisition. I mean, how can startups, you know, effectively balance their focus on developing their product, uh, and as well as their customer acquisition. Right. Right. Uh, to be honest, I think first point is not actually like, well, uh, directly relevant to that question, but more from your kind of like team structure. Uh, I admire solo uh, startup founders, but I believe I'm a strong believer that if you have a strong, like team, team of co-founders that will set you for greater success. This will just multiply the chances of succeeding. So I'm a strong believer in like having uh, two or three like co-founders of a startup. So of complementary skills and experiences, 
Uh, that's the case with my co-founder, Andrew, who has really solid technical background. My background is more in business development and general uh, operations management. So, and we have this really good combination of, of skill sets. So when we were starting with Preston, we basically could cover the full cycle of, you know, developing an, a project for a client from, you know, engaging with the client, making sure that he has a very good experience, uh, then analyzing what they actually need to, to uh, be developed and then executing on the scope that we agreed. So we could cover everything. And then like we uh, gradually grew our team with the right uh, talents. Uh, same with, with startup, right? So usually when, when you even open uh, the a uh, recent batch of YC, uh, Y Combinator um, back startups, you'll see many startups who have just, you know, two co-founders, you know, three co-founders, and they already have initial clients. So the whole, you know, company is just two or three people, but they uh, are capable to deliver the, the full experience and, and the value to their clients. So having a strong uh, co-founding team will definitely uh, give you more chances of, of succeeding. And this will also help you to like distribute the zones of responsibility between co-founders. So being a solo uh, founder, it's obviously hard, you know, to follow the priorities of both the product uh, development and, you know, your customer acquisition. So having possibility to split the responsibility zones will definitely help. And as an kind of like advice of how to balance both the product development and uh, effective growth of, of clients, I would definitely uh, focus on planning. So prioritizing your, your product roadmap, uh, definitely plan your uh, marketing strategy, uh, but of course, being always open to changes and, and as I mentioned, like different experiments and so on, because some of the assumptions that you might have are, are likely uh, to be changed by, by market realities. No, I, I couldn't agree with you more. And I think, you, you know, you're 100% accurate when it comes to the team and the people that you have around you of being able to diversify what their capabilities are and go in together. I think it's a, it's a really important aspect. You know, maybe you can share some best practices for startups, you know, to create a scalable and sustainable go to market strategy that drives long term growth. Yeah, well, I guess, first of all, and that might strange sound from, you know, a person who co-founded a software development company is, you know, not to develop anything before you validate uh, your uh, target uh, clients and, and your target audience. So first of all, after having this amazing idea of a product, it might come from your personal experience, you know, and work and so on. But uh, I've often seen uh, startup founders, you know, just thinking that, all right, if I have this problem, everyone has the same problem. Well, not, not, it might not be the case. <laughs> so just conducting as many as uh, possible of client interviews and building that there is this need uh, is step number one. So, and then of course, uh, let's say invest and deliver the uh, minimum viable product, so-called MVP of your product to test the concept and make sure there is traction and uh, invest as little as time and effort uh, on this as, as possible. So, but of, of course, you know, deliver it up to the presentable standard so that, you know, your target audience uh, will not kind of like experience any kind of like issues uh, trying it out and so on. So providing the good enough experience for clients is, is key. So, and, and yeah, and then go, go for it and uh, double down on, on marketing and, and exposing this to as many of uh, users as possible. Uh, this will help to generate user feedback so that your product roadmap will not be focused again on your kind of own assumptions, assumptions to your team, but it will be driven by real uh, users. So, and, and this will help to uh, design the uh, roadmap of your product in, in the most effective way, which hopefully will generate even more growth opportunities for, for, for the startup. And I, I think we can talk about startups all day, but luckily, uh, and lastly, you guys have a startup kit. So perhaps you can tell us briefly about it and how it can help entrepreneurs launch their products. 
Absolutely, absolutely. So yes, yeah, so the idea of, of uh, Startup Kit correlates with what I've just said. So we, uh, of course, over the course of working uh, on Impressed, uh, and just recap, it's a software development company. So we help startups launch their products and so on. So we, of course, uh, met many startup founders and developed dozens of, of uh, products for them. And of course, startups, they uh, have, you know, three key problems is that they have limited time, they have limited funds, and they have competition, you know, that they need to try to uh, over, let's say, overrun and, and get to the market as, as soon as possible. So, and uh, obviously there are many kind of you know, tools, kind of like low code, no code solutions that help build the MVPs, can help build prod, uh, prototypes. But uh, having solid technical experience, we of course understand these uh, solutions have limits to what kind of like, what kind of product you can build and how far you can go with them. That's why we thought, all right, giving startups a solution that can, you know, help them quickly launch a product, uh, validate, you know, the idea, make sure there is traction and then, you know, continue investing in, in uh, more features and expanding it, uh, have giving them a tool that could uh, help them build this effectively and launch uh, products faster but also which will set them for further scale. So will not limit them in any means of scaling the product, both in terms of, let's say the volume, the of, of usage, uh, how many users they have, and in terms of what kind of like features they might add in the future. So we realized this, this could be a really uh, cool idea for, you know, for a product. And we validate, as mentioned uh, previously, based on the tips that I've shared. So we validate this idea within the immediate uh, like network that we had. So our clients, our partners uh, in all various uh, industries and so on. So they gave positive feedback. We managed to sell this uh, product even before uh, developing it, which again made us more confident that there is a need for this mar uh, for this tool in the market and yeah that's that's how the startup kit uh, idea was born so in a nutshell it's a back-end as a service uh platform so which covers most of the back-end needs of any technical product so we cover the main functionality that uh for example a mobile application or a SaaS product might need such as user management notifications payments and so on, so that the uh, product team can focus on building the business logic of their startup and like connected to the UI, whether it's a mobile application or a web-based uh, platform and yeah, and launch it. So that's in a nutshell what Startup Kit is. That's fantastic and what a, what a useful tool. So if people are interested in finding out more, where can they go? Yeah, they can go to startupkit.io uh, or go to my LinkedIn page and then they can follow uh, to the Startup Kit page and get more in info there or just email me. So I'm happy to uh, do a quick demo and uh, explain how they can value from using Startup Kit. That's fantastic. Roman, I just want to say uh, thanks once more for joining us today. It was a really interesting uh, discussion. And again, I appreciate your time. Thank you, Christian. Thanks for having me.